Hey everybody, Al Iverson here. It's time for another one of your email authentication and deliverability questions answered. This time around, the question I'm gonna answer is this. What does it mean for a mailbox provider to support BIMI? This question comes by way of deliverability friend, Josephine. Uh, she asks, what does it mean for a mailbox provider like Yahoo or Gmail to support BIMI? As in, what is the lift there? And what is the process, if you know? Or maybe a better question is, is it difficult to support BIMI? I've never worked for an ISP or mailbox provider, and I know uh, what it means from a sender perspective, but not so much from a receiver perspective. I'm I've often wondered why more receivers don't support BIMI. That is a great question, Josephine. Let's dive right into it. Keep in mind that these are just my thoughts, right? I, I, I've certainly talked to some mailbox providers about this, but ultimately, the, at the end of the day here, I'm telling you what I think and not necessarily telling you exactly what Yahoo, Gmail, uh, Apple, iCloud, anybody else is thinking. These, these opinions here are solely my own. So with that in mind, why does a mailbox provider like Gmail, Yahoo, or, or iCloud Mail utilize and support BIMI? Um, and ultimately, I think it's because it makes the inbox experience better for their subscribers. That's everything they do is all about making sure that good mail gets to the inbox, that people are looking and finding things they want to, in, to read, want to engage with, putting the valuable messages in front of them and putting the less valuable messages, spam, gray mail, whatever else out of you. So basically, Bimmy helps drive that, drives that trust in email. First off, it shows that senders are authenticated, right? So there's, especially in Gmail, right? They can click on that little blue check box if they've got a BMC certificate and say that, hey, this, that, that Google has authenticated, that this is really from this particular domain. Um, and that kind of thing shows off that the mailbox provider is good at putting good mail in the inbox. This is a carrot to senders too, right? Um, you're telling senders that if you protect your domain with DMARC, I'll let you add on the cool little marketing bit on top of that to show your logo with BIMI. So at the end of the day, I think the, the goal there really is to make the inbox experience better for subscribers. Now, uh, how does uh, a mailbox provider utilize BIMI? Um, and uh, I don't work for any of them. I don't know what's inside of the black box. So here are my best guesses, keeping in mind that I admit wholeheartedly that I'm simplifying this for the sake of discussion. Um, I am not trying to say that it's, you know, all of the effort going into doing this in at scale in Gmail is easy. It's not easy. It's hard. It's technologically challenging. But when you break it down to the, the just the concepts behind how a receiver um, can utilize BIMI, I think this is where that begins. If you look at these five steps here, right, does the message pass authentication checks? Do the DMARC and BIMI DNS records exist for that domain? Is the DMARC policy appropriately high, appropriately protective with quarantine or reject? Now, in that BIMI record, does the BIMI configuration check out? Does it link to a valid CMC or VMC certificate? Um, are they able to parse that certificate to make sure it's still valid, it's still legitimate? And is the SVG logo formatted correctly as well? They're doing some checks there because they don't want to put something uh, displaying it in the inbox that might uh, look mangled or not display properly. And if all of those pass, if all of those are yeses, then it's time to display that BIMI logo in the inbox. And keep in mind that I fully admit there are additional considerations there around scale, caching, volume, and reputation. And what I mean by that is scale is, you know, this is very easy to do for a single message, but what about for millions of messages per minute or per hour? Uh, and so you've got to really uh, have a way to, for example, cache results so that you can, you know, the mailbox provider can pull them up and insert them quickly and isn't necessarily doing millions of extra DNS checks for something that they can sort of uh, look at once and determine that that's valid for some amount of time. Uh, volume as well, mailbox providers like Yahoo, for example, will only show a BIMI logo. If volume is large enough, it's uh, it's sort of a, a, a line in the sand to decide at which point they should go digging into DNS for a logo and care about that BIMI logo. Um, they have to have enough volume that sort of sets somebody apart to show that they're big enough to matter. And then reputation is a piece of that puzzle as well, because they don't want to show a logo and make it 
look like they're saying that this person, this sender is a good sender if the sender has a poor reputation. So if they're a spammer, if there's lots of negative feedback about them, right? High complaints, low engagement, um, linking to bad sites, other stuff going on that's going to give you a bad reputation, they're less likely to show that BIMI logo. And that's, again, that's to protect the inbox provider and their users as well, right? They're, they're all about making sure that they're not doing anything that, that's going to put their users at risk. That's all about risk mitigation and making sure, again, that they put good mail in front of people and don't put bad mail in front of people. Um, the, the spam filtering mechanisms aren't perfect. They don't always get it right. But where you have authentication, you have a great uh, place uh, data-wise to attach reputation to. And so, so uh, authentication and reputation go hand in hand, um, and it's a good way to help uh, identify who somebody is and then identify if they're a good sender or bad sender. And BIMI is just one piece of that puzzle. So that's how that all works. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Thank you so much, Josephine, for the question. Um, if you have any questions that you would like to ask me and perhaps see featured in an upcoming video, drop me an email. My email address is there on the screen. And don't forget to visit our website at valamail.com. You can learn all about DMARC and our DMARC solutions, and we're ready and willing to help you along your DMARC journey. Feel free to reach out to us today. Thanks. Have a great day.